Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's the one and only Nemo Propaganda. Today we're gonna to review the Kef LS50 Meta Bookshelf Speaker. Um, I just did an earlier take for this video and it was 25 minutes long. So we're gonna try again and try to chop that time down because no one has time for all that. So I wasn't planning to review these speakers originally and then a friend of mine bought them and was like, hey, do you wanna borrow them to review them? And I was like, sure, why not? Because a lot of people asked about them in the comments. So here we are, we've got them. I'm gonna throw some specs on screen so you can look at them. I'll tell you about some standout features, I'll tell you about what they sound like, we'll do some comparisons, then we'll wrap it up, okay? So, first standout feature is gonna be the front baffle of the cabinet is gonna be very, and I do mean very rounded. Um, some people think it's a cool look, I personally don't like it at all, I think it's really weird looking, but who cares what I think with respect to looks. Um, the cabinet itself is also another standout feature just on its own, simply because of how amazingly high quality this is. I have never seen a cabinet this robust in this price category, and the only time I've seen a cabinet this robust is like if I was at a trade show looking at a pair of Wilson Alexandria XLFs that are $250,000. What do I mean? Well, let me show you this very unscientific knock test. And guys, I, I don't normally do this like knock test nonsense thing, but like just hear me out here, okay? Do you hear? It sounds like I'm knocking on pavement outside. Like it doesn't matter where I knock back, the front. These things are freaking solid. They are so inert and well damped. It's crazy. That impressed me so much. One thing to mention though, if you are gonna buy these or own these when you handle them, do be careful. I don't know if the front baffle is just way thicker than the rest of the cabinet or what's going on, but the speaker is quite front heavy. Um, and you just, you gotta know that when you handle it or you might drop it, okay? Just word of advice there. Let's see if there are any other standout features. Um, perhaps not necessarily a standout feature, but they do come in some pretty cool and unique colors that I do think is worth mentioning. I'll throw a few of them on screen so you can kind of see what I mean. There's like this really cool matte blue color that I thought was great. There's this matte black I have here. There's a really cool white color. And then there's this other kind of like gray that has a different color cone. And I thought that was pretty cool too. I don't dislike any of the colors, honestly, which is pretty rare for someone like me who's very picky. Anyhow. Uh, last standout feature is obviously gonna be the driver arrangement being concentric or coaxial, whatever you wanna call it is up to you. But basically the tweeter is inside the midwoofer. It's a five and a quarter inch design. You're gonna see this fairly commonly in something like car audio or like marine audio and things like that. It's kind of uncommon to see in hi-fi, but this is kind of Kef's claim to fame. They do this on their cheapest speaker, the Q150, the Kef Blade that's like $30,000 has it too. Kef's kind of concentric coaxial thing is, that's their thing, that's what they do, all their speakers have it. So, let's talk about what it sounds like. So let's start with the top end. The top end is gonna be a little bit on the forward side of neutral. It's gonna reward you with a good amount of detail and information. The cool thing here is this never became fatiguing or harsh at all. And I mean that really in the truest sense of the word because these play very, very, very cleanly and very well refined in the top end. What the, the way I discovered this essentially is because it's a small driver, it does need a little bit of volume to bring out its dynamics and sense of scale. Most five and a quarter and smaller drivers do. And I was listening to them and I was like, man, it doesn't seem like it's that loud, but the numbers on my preamp are a lot higher than usual. So I pulled out my dB meter and I was about 85 dB with 87, 88 dB peaks. I normally listen at 75 dB with 80 dB peak. So that was quite a bit louder than usual and it did not feel that way at all. And when a speaker is like very refined, that's one of the things you may experience. So I thought that was pretty cool. The micro detail is also very good. The top end is not gonna give you as much information as something like the Focal Aria 906, but it is a little bit more detailed than the average $1,500 speaker, I would say. And that micro detail is impeccable. What I mean by that is in a song like Home by Marshmallow, there's a hi-hat that just like, it goes out in like rapid succession, like one after the other, right? Um, and every single cymbal hit, it's a synth most likely, but every single cymbal hit is so well-defined that the next one comes, the next one comes, the next one comes, and they're all so well-defined. The best way I can describe this is gonna be like, 
if we were doing a subwoofer review here and I was talking about how articulate and quick the subwoofer was with respect to its performance with a double bass line, for example, and just how well like the bass line was like just distinct with each beat after the next being so clear, that's how this thing is with the top end. Very good, very impressive. The sound stage is gonna image wide as hell. That's kind of what Kef's like UniQ driver thing does. Uh, the vertical was just a little bit on the short side, I would say. Um, and that is something I also noticed with the Q150 when I reviewed that. I was hoping the more expensive LS50 Meta would have a better vertical stage, but I think that's gonna kinda come down to the concentric five and a quarter inch driver being on the smaller side. Perhaps if it was a six and a half, it'd be a little bit larger vertically. I wonder if Kef will do that one day. Imagine that, a six and a half inch uh, LS50. That might stomp on a lot of things. Anyhow, I think that wraps up the top end. Center image was good, no complaints there. Um, no complaints really on the top end at all, just things to know though. You're gonna have to give it some volume if you want those dynamics and that sense of scale. Let's move down to the mid-range. The mid-range is what I would call fairly neutral. However, the information within that neutrality was very well fleshed out, uh, very well detailed, and just a, just a little bit rich, I would say, compared to something like the Focal Aria 906. Moving down to the mid bass, the mid bass is not boosted whatsoever. However, the amount of information again that you get from the mid bass is very well defined and very, um, I guess you could say textured. Um, yeah, moving down to the bass overall, bass quantity on the speaker, fairly high. That took me by surprise. I was getting fairly good extension down to about 55 Hertz, which is probably a little bit generous in this room, um, but that's what I was experiencing. After that, they did kind of fall off a cliff, but from about 55 hertz on up, man, these things sounded so full. If only the sense of scale was as large to match, that would have been awesome. Again, I was able to accomplish it with a little bit more volume than I'm used to, but something to note perhaps for people that are just absolutely unwilling to dig into that volume knob. So let's talk about subwoofer pairing real quick, and then we'll talk about um, Comparisons. So um, most of my listening impressions were without a subwoofer and the comparisons will also be without a subwoofer, obviously, but these falling off a cliff, you know, roughly after 55 Hertz in this room and probably after 60 Hertz in most other rooms, my room has fairly strong bass. Um, subwoofer is gonna be fairly, I'd say mandatory if you want extension. Um, I paired it with its natural mate, the Kef KC62. I found it to be a very good pairing. I also paired it with the Rel T5X, REL T9X pair, uh, Rhythmic F12, Rhythmic FVX12, and they all paired very well. Now, you might be wondering, which one paired the best? Was it the KC62? Surprise here, None of, not a single one of these subwoofers paired better than the next. The base of the KEF LS50 Meta is not all the way on the SPL side where it's very heavy, nor is it all the way on the SQ side where it's very light, quick, articulate, and airy. It was kind of right in the middle. So with that, it seemed like it could kind of pair well with just about any quality subwoofer you want to throw at it. If you like bass that's on the heavier side, you probably want to go for something more on the SPL side. If you like bass that's a little bit tonally lighter, you probably want to go something more on the SQ side. Um, or, you know, if you just want the uh, looks to match, get the Kef KC62 for it, I guess. Um, let's uh, talk, oh, also uh, SVS uh, Micro 3000. I use that subwoofer as well. Um, let's talk about comparison. So, First, let's start with comparing this to Kef's own Q150. I reviewed that a while ago. Uh, huge price disparity here, important to keep that in mind. The Kef Q150, 600 bucks full MSRP, goes on sale for as much as 50% off, bringing its price down to just $300. Um, the fit and finish of the Q150 simply cannot compare to the LS50 Meta. The LS50 Meta is superior in its build quality, fit and finish and presentation. Let's talk about the sound. The top end of the LS50 Meta and Kef Q150 both image insanely well with respect to width. They both have that little bit of shortness in the vertical uh, sound stage. The Kef LS50 is just gonna go ahead and murder the Q150 though with respect to refinement, micro detail, um, just all those things in the top end. The LS50 Meta is a lot better at and it should be, it's quite a bit more expensive. Moving down to the mid range, I can't remember much about the mid-range of the Kef Q150. I think there was just nothing to talk about there. So again, LS50 Meta here is gonna have a much better mid-range. Moving down to the bass overall, the Kef Q150 actually had quite a lot of bass. I did find it to be 
fairly sloppy, however, um, and a little bit have, you know, overhang and not the best bass note distinction and things like that. The Atlas 50 Meta does not suffer from any of those ailments. It is much better than the Q150 with respect to bass. So, you know, overall from top to bottom, the LS50 Meta is a lot better than the KEF Q150 and it should be. Now, there are a lot of similarities, however, and that in being like the flavor of it. And mostly it's gonna be the imaging. If you want a taste of that KEF imaging, the Q150 gives it to you. And I mean, just as good imaging. That width on the Q150 and LS50 Meta is nearly identical. The sense of depth and distance you can get with this driver arrangement on the LS50 Meta, the Q150 can do also. Just with respect to all those other sound characteristics and overall essentially, LS50 Meta is quite a few levels above. Let's move on and compare this bad boy to the Focal Aria 906, which is one of my daily drivers. Uh, both speakers are going to be a little bit on the forward side of neutral with respect to their treble and higher frequencies. The Focal Aria 906 is going to give you a whole lot more detail um, and information in that top end. The KEF LS50 Meta, while it's going to give you a little bit less information in the top end, it's not dark by any means. Um, nor, nor is it like not revealing. It's a very revealing speaker. Just the Focal Aria 906 is like crazy revealing. What the LS50 Meta is gonna do better, on the other hand, in the top end is the micro detail, that separation between those hi-hat notes and those higher frequencies. Separation, very good on the speaker. A little bit better than the RA906. Um, Imaging on both was very good. I would say these image a little bit wider than the Aria 906, but overall imaging, the Aria I found to be a little bit better. The LS50 Meta did project like its center image just a little bit more, what would you say? Um, it's like locked in a little bit more. Um, with the Aria 906, if I open my eyes, like the center image doesn't fall apart, it's still there. But with the LS50 Meta, with my eyes open, not only was the center image there, like if I forgot about it and I was like on my phone scrolling or something and that vocalist started singing, like it would draw my attention to it. It was very good and very locked in place. Moving down to the mid-range, the Focal Aria 906 by direct comparison to the LS50 Meta is gonna be a little bit on the cooler, leaner clinical side in its mid-range. And by direct comparison, the LS50 Meta is gonna be the total opposite. Um, now, the Aria 906 isn't cool, dry, and lean on its own. And the LS50 Meta isn't like warm and rich and thick sounding, but by comparison to each other, that is how you could describe the difference. Moving down to the mid bass, neither speaker has a mid bass bump, but the mid bass of the LS50 Meta is a little bit stronger. Moving down to the bass overall, the KEF LS50 Meta has a whole lot more bass quantity. The Aria 906 is gonna have a little bit less, well, quite a bit less bass quantity, but its bass note distinction and its speed is gonna be quite a bit better. Uh, it's just gonna be a, a lighter, airier type of bass, whereas the LS50 Meta is gonna play a little bit heavier by direct comparison. Um, let's move on and talk about this compared to the Bucard S400. The Bucard S400 is another one of my daily drivers. Uh, the top end of both speakers is fairly different here. So the KEF LS50 Meta, we've got a little bit on the forward side of neutral. The Bucard S400 I own, which is the first batch, is just a little bit on the darker side of neutral. Both offer up the same level of information, however. It's just with the Bucard S400, it's just a little bit pulled back. With the LS50 Meta, it's a little bit pushed forward and easier to identify. The micro detail or nuance detail or detail of the detail, LS50 Meta is better at, again, that hi-hat comparison I gave with the Marshmallow song, Home. Um, the LS50 Meta definitely wins there. Um, the Bucard S400, you're gonna be able to listen to a little bit longer. And while both image very wide, I'll say this. I, I will not say the LS50 Meta stage is wider than the Bucard S400. The LS50 Meta did give more of a sense of distance if I was playing a game, watching a movie, or watching TV. So in a home theater setting, I would, I'd say these probably stage larger, but for most music, the Bucard S400 had a much, much larger sense of scale or much more dynamic as well. Um, where were we, mid-range? I think so, let's talk about mid-bass. Neither speaker has a mid-bass bump, uh, but by direct comparison, the LS50 Meadow is a little bit tonally richer in its mid-bass region. Bass overall, however, the Bucard S400 have a tremendous amount more 
space overall than the LS50 Meta. They extend much lower and have a whole lot more quantity. Listening to the S400 is almost like listening to the Kef LS50 with a subwoofer. It's like that's how much more bass it has. Anyhow, let's see if there's a speaker I want to compare it to that's a lot cheaper besides the Q150. We already did that one. Let's talk about the ELAC DBR62. We always talk about that when we review speakers. So the ELAC DBR62, that's one of my favorite speakers. I like it a lot despite how ugly it is. The top end of both speakers is on the forward side of neutral. The KEF LS50 Meta is going to give you a whole lot more uh, refinement compared to something like the ELAC DBR62. The ELAC DBR62 is not something I would call like shrill by any means or sibilant, but by direct comparison to the refined LS Meta sound, you might find the DBR62 just a little bit sibilant by direct comparison. The LS50 again, better micro detail, better nuance detail as well. Moving down to the mid-range, both speakers have a very, very good mid-range. Um, the ELAC DBR62 will feel a little bit more warmer, fuller, and textured by direct comparison. That's kind of the thing it's really known for. Um, the LS50 Meta's mid-range is not bad by any means, however, and is a little bit more, how do you say this? I guess separation has better separation. Moving down to the mid-bass, this LS50 Meta does not have a mid-bass bump. The DBR62 does have a mid-bass bump. So it's gonna to sound totally richer, fuller, and warmer by direct comparison. While the LS50 Meta's bass overall is gonna be very high in quality, I'm sorry, very high in quantity, but not offer up much extension, the ELAC DBR62 is gonna give you the opposite. It's not gonna give you a whole lot of bass quantity, but the ELAC DBR62 will extend quite a bit lower. That about wraps up that comparison. Um, I don't think there's much else I want to compare this to. Hmm. Let's talk about the Focal Core 806 and then I'll shut up, I promise, guys. Focal Core 806 used to be my daily driver until I got the Focal Aria 906. It's bigger and more expensive. Brother, the Focal R uh, Cora 806 is 990 bucks for the pair. These are 1500 but you kind of need matching stands for the Aria, so they're, it brings it within a couple hundred dollars. Anyhow. Uh, finish on the LS50 Meta is a little bit nicer than the Cora. Let's talk about the top end. The top end of both of them are a little bit on the forward side of neutral. The Cora is going to, like the Aria, is going to give you a whole lot more detail and information. Um, the LS50 Meta is going to give you more micro detail and nuanced information in its top end. Neither were offensive, but the folk, the Kef, <laughs> I'm starting to mesh them here. The Kef LS50 Meta is the more refined sound. The Focal Cora 806's top end is better suited to lower volume listening. That speaker and its bigger brother, the Aria, are the low volume champions. They, uh, the Focal Core 806 is more dynamic, has a larger sense of scale at low volumes and high volumes. Moving down to the mid-range, it's much like the Aria 906, where by comparison, the Focal Core 806 might seem a little bit drier, or analytical, or cool compared to the Kef LS50 Meta. And the Kef LS50 Meta compared to the Core 806 might seem a little bit richer and a little warmer. It's not a rich and warm speaker overall, nor is the Focal Cora 806 a dry and lean speaker overall. Just when you compare the two, that's kind of how it seems. Moving down to the mid-bass performance, the LS50 Meta has the stronger mid-bass and more bass quantity overall. The Focal Cora 806 is gonna give you, again, more of that lighter bass that's faster to respond, and it's gonna give you a little bit more bass note distinction, articulation, and just a touch more extension. So I like both speakers quite a bit. If I had to pick, I'd probably take the Cora 806 over the Kef LS50 Meta, but I am a Focal, Focal fanboy, so probably don't take my word for that one. Um, that's it, guys. I don't have any more comparisons, and I'm hoping to God this one didn't cross the 24-minute mark like the last one. If it did, I'm sorry, because we're keeping this cut. Um, if you have any questions, ask about them in the comments below, and until next time, later.